All right, looks like we still got a decent amount of people in there. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for waiting. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Chris. I will be your dungeon master for this evening. Um, we have a very special uh, evening prepared for our players and for your viewing pleasure. We are restarting what was once our West Marchers project, uh, White Cliff, to explore this very strange, almost lost-esque island. Um, and what we'll do is uh, we'll introduce all intros our players, and we'll just go down the line here, starting with Jacob. And you can tell us uh, your about your character, if you want to tell us your race, class, whatever the small details you would like, and then give us your your Twitter handle. And um, if you want to, you can tell us what your goals or what you wish to accomplish here in White Cliff. So go ahead, starting with Jake. Oh, let me turn on the music too. All right, which one was it? This one. I don't, I don't think we can hear you, Jacob. You're still there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's try that again. Hi, uh, I'm Jacob. I'm at trying not to lurk on Twitter, and uh, man, now I have to remember what I was saying before. Uh, okay, so I'm playing a Tabaxi barbarian. Uh, his name is Mini Storm Clouds. He goes by Storm. Uh, probably the most fun way of describing him, if you remember the character Tai Lung from the first Kung Fu Panda movie. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Cross that with Curious George. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be amusing as all get out. So, uh, that's him. He wants to see everything because everything is new and it's going to be great because it's new things. And so let's go explore something. And while we're there, maybe we can find something big and ugly and nasty to kill because that'll be cool. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Next up, Norman. Uh, I'm Norman at Metadoxy on Twitter. Um, I will be playing the human wizard uh, Caius Proteus. And he is here to find some cool stuff. That's that's about all it is. He, he doesn't have a, a big agenda at the moment, but uh, he is a former... Uh, archaeologist, and so interested in whatever might be found in this unexplored land. Glorious. Next up, Ray. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ray Sean. Uh, Ray Quantes M on Twitter. Um, I am playing a silver dragonborn, Kirith Sahin, um, who's here to try to get answers on his visions of this island. So, uh, basically, yeah, that's why he's here. Do you want to tell everybody who your visions came from? Uh, Bahamut. Got a, a follower of the Platinum Dragon. Yes. <laughs> and Tracy. Hello, I'm Tracy at TracyMichelle16 on Twitter. I'm going to be playing Gail. She's an Air Genasi Ranger, and she's just here for steady income. You can certainly get all of the things that you're searching for here in White Cliff. <laughs> don't don't talk about exciting dancing stick or you're embarrassing me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look away from chat now. So <laughs> what we're gonna do, I'm gonna play our intro, because I figured out how to do that, and then we're gonna start this shit up. So be right back.
and welcome back <laughs> for everybody else who was in the roll 20 with me it was just silence for 30 silence. seconds and i wanted to say something I'm watching the intro. You it's cool right i, I was watching yeah. the intro as well it was super fun to make anyways <laughs> so um first of all i wanted to welcome you all to white cliff it has been six months since last reinforcements and supplies arrived at White Cliff from the continent. The winter months were harsh in Keystone, portions of the Satoza Bay frozen on the surface. Only the biggest ships equipped with icebreakers could pass through, and even then the captains did not stray too far from the coast. Blizzards strung, sprung up as suddenly as the various monsters and creatures that inhabit the mysterious island. Too many ships met their end when a whiteout sprung from the clouds, their remains still littered along the northern coast. What goods could be salvaged, taken by God knows what? Thus, the winter months were mostly spent indoors. Even trade between the settlements on White Cliff ceased. It was a time of rest and repair for the inhabitants, tinged with anxiety and fear that when the ice thawed, those northern settlements would be gone. But it was a rather uneventful winter. With the supplies from the continent, a successful harvest, and adventurers to protect the latter too, this winter proved to be far less taxing than the previous. Spring was still a welcome change. A few months stuck indoors can drive even the most patient ind individuals to something close to insanity. On the first few warm days, farmers returned to their plots of lands, clearing, tilling, and planting. The residents repaired their leaky roofs and whatever chores could not be done during the harsh cold. Two weeks into spring, and word was received from both Orhold and Dirtwater. Each settlement had survived the winter with only mild repairs to be done. The miners had returned to the mines to begin their weary work anew. Squads of soldiers once again patrolled the perimeter of Keystone. Spring was a time of awakening of plants and animals, but also of the predatorial creatures that stalk the land. It's been a fairly mild spring afternoon. Winds gust from the northwest, bringing with it a cool and gently wafting breeze. The smell of dew-tipped grass and damp earth floats along this breeze. It's market day, and the Keystone is much more bustling than normal. Vendors lined the main road in Cape District, selling their excess goods they had kept through during the winter. And then I will switch us to there. So. <coughs> Actually, let me zoom in over here. The Blooming Rose, which is this building right here is one of the older buildings in Keystone. First, the Green Hollows HQ was erected, followed by the barracks and the Crow's Nest Inn. No one could be surprised that the, a brothel was the fourth building built in the New World. <laughs> the Blooming Rose is an L-shaped two-storied building built from the heavy white oak trees that once covered this peninsula. As such, when one enters the interior, a subtle hint of vanilla permeates the air. The interior is a collage of maroons, violets, and golds, lending itself a nearly imperious air. The front doors open up to a medium-sized foyer lit by a crystalline chantern suffused with a magical soft orange glow. Two doors on either side lead to various sitting rooms and bedrooms alike. The right door leads to the parlor where patrons can partake in various liquors, spirits, and ales. Upstairs is the quarters of the inhabitants who work under the guidance and protection of the brothel's mistress, Radiance. And hidden beside the stairwell, just out of view from the front door, is a panel that can be pushed aside. This panel leads down stone steps into a hallway in the cellar. There are three doors here, two of which lead to storage. The one at the very end of the hall leads to the room of one wizard, a man known as Caius Proteus. So, Norman, would you like to describe what your character looks like, what he might be doing, what his room looks like, anything like that? Um, so the room would be relatively simple, relatively bare, um, but with sort of piles of just gear and equipment and practical things just kind of haphazardly placed. Um, the, uh, the wizard is, you know, at all times wearing either his traveler's clothes or his robe. He always keeps his hood up, even indoors. Uh, you can just see, like, strands of white hair sort of pouring out. He, but he doesn't really like to draw sort of the gaze of other people. And 
often doesn't make eye contact. Um, he is often in silence, either down here or sitting up in the parlor, just poring over his spell book. And a little bit, when people do approach him, a little bit um, sort of always surprised, as if he didn't notice that they were there. <laughs> oh, you've been standing in front of me for ten minutes. Oh, hey. <laughs> So is that yeah. uh, is that what you're doing now, uh, pouring through your spellbook? Um, most likely. What what time of day is it? Uh, about mid afternoon. Uh, probably mid afternoon. He'd probably be looking over the spellbook, um, trying to figure out, sort of the the book has more spells in it than he actually understands because it was a found object, and so he is still trying to learn some spells that are in there. Um, and so he'd be pouring over that, but probably getting a little peckish in mid-afternoon, and uh, we'll head out for head up for uh, tea. As a matter of fact, as you as you're starting to kind of shuffle your spell book and um, get ready to go up for some for some tea, you hear a soft but familiar knock at your door. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, who's who's knock? Would I recognize whose knock it is? Yes, it, it sounds... Normally it's a, a, a very soft couple of raps, um, usually indicating that Radiance, the mistress of the house, has come to um, to ask of your wisdom. Or in your intellect, okay. I guess. Uh, intellect. Yeah, not, not, not wisdom. Uh, <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> what? Wait. Oh, what... Uh... What time is it? Is it? Uh, closes up the book, sort of looks around, and kind of drops it on the bed. Moves some things that probably like a pack or something that's sort of fallen over in front of the doorway. And just shoves down, opens the door. Um, just sort of about, you know, about a foot. Doesn't really open it the whole way and just looks at it. Uh, when you Who's open it? the door, yes? you see mm -hmm. a dusky rose-colored tiefling with spiling burgundy hair, or smiling burgundy horns that swirl out from blush-colored hair. Penetrating eyes take you in a sparkling intellect behind pools of molten gold. A small smile plays at her lips as she raises a friendly hand in greeting. Good afternoon, Caius. I hope I have not interrupted any important works. Oh, it's, it's all important work. What do you mean? Uh, uh, oh, and he reaches out after a moment and takes the hand. Well, uh, what... Uh... What can I do for you? May I come in? Uh, of course, of course. And he opens the door and sort of steps back. Uh, she enters, yeah. moving with come. a grace kind of normally reserved for elves. Rather than walk across the floor, she kind of glides like a cloud drifting through the blue sky. When the door is firmly shut behind her, she reaches into a sash at her waist and produces a bone dagger. It's a wicked-looking thing, bleached white by the sun. She kind of puts it out in her hands like this and hands it towards you. Um, I, mean, I don't... If we're doing gift exchange, I don't really have <laughs> anything on hand. It is nothing like Takes this. the dagger, looks at it. Um, you see that the hilt is actually a darker shade of white, not the cream-colored ivory of the blade. Uh, you assume it must have been at one point covered by some kind of leather or cloth. There's no sign of deterioration hmm. or erosion, and even without touching the edge, you can just sense its sharpness. And uh, as hmm. you're kind of looking over it, she says, As per our arrangement, I would like you to examine this, if you please. Uh... Can I get a sense of how how old it is, just by sort of looking it over? Yeah, go ahead and roll a nature check. Okay. First roll, first roll. First roll. And it's a nature check. <laughs> ah. First roll, nature check. That is not terrible, but my rolling usually is. Yeah. That's a seven. You get the feeling that... Um, th I think... When she hands it to you, you your first instinct is that it's a brand new dagger. Like I said, there's no mm -hmm. sign of erosion or anything. But then you kind of, like, uh, holding it in your hands, you feel a slight vibration. And you think that this, this dagger must have once been enchanted or something along those nature. Um, 
Otherwise, why would she bring it to you? Uh, are there any are there any markings on it? Uh, anything that looks like it could could be like uh, magical symbols or a language of some kind? There are a couple of what looks like uh, actually carved into the bone, uh, the hilt. Um, looks like it's almost like a Y, except with a third, like up and straight up and down, like a Y, but like it all like there's a line through the middle of it. Um, hmm. And uh, if you want to roll an Arcana check, go ahead and do that. Yeah. And as you're as you're died. examining it, she says, um, she... "One of my blossoms overheard her customer speaking of this blade. It was found by one of our scouting teams, buried in the very edges of the swamp west of here." I found it rather curious, and thus purchased the weapon from the scout for a nominal price. I'd like to know its true value. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> uh, I rolled a nine on my Arcana check, so I have no idea <laughs> to what uh, what the symbol means. You don't know what the symbol means, but you can by just like reaching out with your with your um, your magic and kind of feeling the blade in your hand you can tell that the magic that once resided in this dagger is similar to those used by druids it's some sort of like strange elemental magic but you've not encountered anything like it before it, it's similar but not the same hmm well, this is not uh this doesn't look like traditional uh, sort of wizardly arcanics. Uh, more hmm, tribal, I'd call it. Um, I hmm. It, just give me, give me a moment, and I will, I will take out my pearl. Okay. And I'll sort of look it over with the pearl, and I will cast identify. Okay. Just so, to see if there's any other you can't specific it ritually. Uh, no, I'll take. I'll do it in the one minute. I'll, I'll spend the spell, the spell slot. Okay. Um, so as you do, you kind of lean back and put your hands over the dagger over your your like little workshop area, mm -hmm. and um, you um, channel your power into the pearl, and it kind of shines really bright, and then the pearl actually turns black, and then just turns into ash and then as it does that bright energy forms in your palm and you push it put your hands over the blade and you can feel the sudden pull through your magical senses like it's trying to um kind of suck up any kind of magic that it can and you feel uh these ancient magical pathways that carve from the very uh, blunt end of the hilt to the very end of the blade these pathways swerve together, cross and intersect until once again joining at the tip. Uh, though the magic in this, that was once held in this blade has long since faded away, you can sense where it once resided stored within the bone itself. You get the feeling hmm. that whatever, whatever creature that this blade was made from was magical in nature. That's why I was able to so like well hold in these magical pathways where the magic would the enchantment actually hmm. laid. Okay, I will relate this to Radiance that it's whatever magic was in it is gone now but it was clearly made from a ma the bone of a magical creature. She kind of leans back and like and strokes her chin for a second. And she seems kind of pleased with the information that you've gleaned from the weapon. Um, and she thanks you. And knowing what I know now, I am certain I can double the price for which I had purchased this piece. The right collector in the Empire would love a once enchanted dagger from the New World. You can see her eyes kind of glint with the prospect. Mm -hmm. And she, she bows her head to you. Who, who did you, uh, if I may ask, who, who did you purchase this from? Oh, she was a scout. Um, I can I can ask one of my my blossoms and see if she can uh, remember what the the scout's name was. And I, do you wish to speak with them? Uh, possibly, uh, possibly. 
It might be worth uh, going back to the site and seeing what more might be there. Ah, yes, that, that is very a smart decision. Who knows what else could be lying in that foul place. I will, um, I will inquire about the scout's name, and I will, I will give it to you. Yeah. Very good, very good, yeah. <clears throat> I do hope these quarters there... continue to suit your needs. If ever you need a thing from me and I am not available, please inform Thalai, and she will let me know. Uh, yes. You yes, know Thalai is her, uh, Goliath... Uh, muscle, I guess, would be the right word. Uh, I mean, kind of all Goliaths are muscle, but she's the... <laughs> she, Radiance protects her blossoms, which are her, you know, her mm -hmm. uh, employees. And, um... <laughs> the lie is the one who protects them with her muscles. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she's sort of the bodyguard of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, of course, of course. And he sort of looks around the room, kind of as if he hasn't noticed the room very much. <laughs> Perfectly fine, I think. Good. Uh, if there's if there's nothing else. Oh fine. no! I, let, I will not. Uh, I will not interrupt you further. I will send down one of my uh, one of my girls, and, and she, once I have the name for you. That's very good. I was just about to. Uh, oh, what? Oh, oh! I was. I was going up for tea anyway. So. Lovely. I suppose we'll we'll both walk in the same hallway then. Of, yes, I do believe that is what will happen. And she opens the door. And as she opens the door and starts to leave, um, you hear the ringing of bells. And then, we're going to switch gears. The Stone Temple is located in Ardmore District, just over the canal leading from Cave District. Which is... This is the Cape District. And over here, past this uh, sort of... This gate here leads into Ardmore, which is the it's the kind of the I wouldn't poorer isn't necessarily the correct word. I wouldn't use slums either. Um, it's just uh, it's closer to the walls, so more people live there. It's a little more crowded. Um, the houses are a little more ramshackle, but I would say that there aren't anybody with like a particular amount of wealth here in Keystone, except for maybe a couple of the merchants and obviously Radiance. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, so that's, that's where Ardmore District is, and the temple, Stone Temple, is right there where that six is. Uh, the temple is no grand thing, but it is one of the few stone buildings in all of Keystone. It boasts no spiraling steeples, only a squat bell tower perched atop its roof. Attached to the back of the temple is an infirmary where the very sick and wounded are kept. Double doors open to a large atrium. Twelve alcoves filled with shrines to various gods dot the outer edges of the building. Wooden pews align along a red carpet leading to a raised dais. And upon this dais is an altar dedicated to the Shining One, the sun god Pelor. And sitting on the, um, on the altar is actually a, a relic of the god, a shield on a pedestal carved with Pelor's symbol, a shard of the sun. The door to the left of the dais leads to the arch cleric's room, while the door to the right leads to the bell tower and also to the infirmary. And within one of these alcoves lies a shrine to the Lord of the North Wind, the platinum dragon god Bahamut. There inside the shrine, lighting wax candles, is a silver dragonborn. Now, Bray, if you would like to describe your character for us and uh, how um, how you keep your vigil to your god or what your shrine looks or anything like that. Yeah, uh, so you see um, probably, I would say probably standing, you know, you know, with his arms kind of like, you know, positioned, uh, kneeling down and holding, probably has a symbol in his hand, okay. um, is a, uh, like a six foot eight uh, silver dragonborn, um, probably wearing something, I don't know, ceremonial for, you know, Bahamut, I don't know the colors per se right now, but. He's probably um, wearing yeah, probably, probably like wearing platinum's, golds, and silvers. I would say. Yeah, so so he was he's probably wearing that right now, and uh, yeah, so he's probably just there, just praying right now. Cool. Um, is there any? What do you keep in mind when you are when you're thinking about your god and what you're when, like almost almost what is your like personal creed? Do you, are you 
there to protect the weak? Are you more of a healer? Um, what do you... Um... If you don't mind yeah, asking. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. Um, he's yeah, he's he's more he's more of you know the you know a healer and a and a protector, which means probably why he's over here. So he what he does he usually takes care of uh you know the not so fortunate people here on on this side of uh, Keystone. Cool, I like that. Yeah, awesome. So as you are um you know keeping your vigil and praying to your God, you actually feel a familiar presence behind you. As a, as a cleric and as somebody who is steeped in divine magic, you can, you're very attuned to these energies, and you can actually feel Brother Tythor's aura, which kind of feels like a, a setting sun. That's uh, the rays are like gently kissing your scales, and he's just kind of quietly and patiently waiting for you to finish your prayers. Yeah, um, I'll probably, I'll probably tilt my head up, and kind of probably don't turn my head, and, and I'll say, uh. Uh, Brother Tythor. Um, the arch cleric, uh, you can almost feel his smile. That's the so, what sort of presence that he has. Um, he his eyes are crystal blue. Um, he's an older dragonborn, long in both tooth and claw, perhaps in his fortieth year. Um, and he says, "Greetings, Brother Sahin. I think I thank the Dawn Father that the Marshal sent you here to us." You have worked well and learned much this past winter. I hope that your work here is satisfying. He kind of looks. He, he'll turn. He'll turn around and look and give him a, a polite, you know, a little bow. And he says, um, um, "I, I kind of want to do more than just help the unfortunate." He smiles at that, and um, he says, There is always a chance to do more, especially here on Whitecliff. The gods work through us in ways we cannot understand. If the Platinum dra Dragon led you here, then your purpose and your destiny is intertwined with this island. If you do not mind my asking, we all have a purpose and a reason why we chose to come to the new world what is yours he kind of he'll take like a, a like a deep breath and he says um i've been having visions before i came here about this island i don't know what is here or why i'm here but he kind of, when you say that, he kind of leans back and kind of looks at you in a new light. And uh, there's a kind of, there's a look in his eye that you can't exactly read. And he says, um, I'm bound for the infirmary. A brawl in the market led to a few bruised egos and a man with a broken arm. Come, together we will heal this man of his foolish wound. He'll, he'll give a nod and say, um, yes, sir. So he leads you to the infirmary, passing the spiraling staircase that leads up to the tower. From there, you enter another door. Inside is a long, rectangular room filled with cots, tables, and cabinets. There are about 20 cots, eight of which are occupied. Sitting on the edge of one of the closer beds is a human man in his mid-twenties. An acolyte um, is actually holding his <laughs> twisted arm in gentle hands, but it's clear that this person's in a great, a great amount of pain. Um, so you and Brother Typhor step up to the patient. And he, uh, the arch cleric, takes this man's arm gingerly from the acolyte, who immediately moves away to wash their hands and treat other patients. And Tyther nods his head to you. I will aid you with my power to dull his pain, but you must be the one to set the bone back into place. When this is done, we can pool our gifts together and easily heal the torn muscle and, tis muscle, muscle and tissue. <laughs> okay. Um, have I seen this guy before? Um, has he like come back like multiple times? You, you know what? Probably. I would say that this guy's <laughs> gotten probably a, 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 a lot of fights. He seems quick to temper. Yeah. So do I, do I know his name? His name? Haha. Like <laughs> okay. 
So I'll go up to him. I'll, I guess I'll just go up to him and look at his arm and I go, uh, uh, Michael, uh, what did you do this time? Nothing. Just some guy pushed me in the street and I got really mad and he might have been like two feet bigger than me and you know, I was also... I'm really tired, so I wasn't on my like best game, and and mm-hmm. then he kind of mm-hmm. he kind of moves a little bit when he's saying all this to you, and he's like, "Oh, damn it." Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Let me see. Uh, so go ahead and roll a medicine check, please. Oh, I'm gonna do this on roll twenty, cause why not? Medicine. Okay. Oh, wait, is the music Seven. better? I, ho- I turned it down. I don't know if it's. Uh... Yeah, I think they said yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, yes. no, you don't have to apologize. It's it's hard for me to tell if it's too loud. No, nah, just I I saw it and didn't realize that you had already done and they had said, hey, cool, thanks, and went, ah, never mind. It's like, shit. Um, so I rolled a seven. You, you managed to set the bone, but like in a, it, in a kind of way that's not as gentle as it could be. Um... And he kind of lets out a really loud, oh, <laughs> boy. Um, and... uh, but like, oh, quit your whining. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Brother Tyler gives you a very disapproving glance, uh, but doesn't say anything. And uh, he, <laughs> um, y- you need to work on steadying your hands when dealing with a patient. Now, together we will, we will work our magics. I will lend you my power, and together we will knit his tissue back into place. So now, I need you to roll a d20 plus your spellcasting modifier. Oh, okay. I can do it. Um, Or if you want to... If you would like to do expend a spell slot to do, like, a cure wounds or something... uh, You know what? Um, I'll do that. You can. Okay, cool. I'll guarantee that... Okay, I'll do that. Um, this is Michael, so I'm going to do level one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's four. Awesome. Did you add your wisdom to it as well? Uh, I believe it is already added, so it's, I think it's four. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's, that's totally enough. Um, so... You reach deep into the pool in your stomach where the divine energy gifted to you by your patron resides. The energy flows through your veins and pulls into your palms. You release the energy and once again feel the presence of Brother Tythor. And you can see in your mind's eye the torn tissue and muscles. And together you can kind of feel um, his g- gentle guiding touch as you knit this tissue together and fuse his bones back into place. And by the time you're done, the man's arm, Michael's arm, is no longer broken. And both of you lean back, withdrawing your magics from the man. And Tythor smiles and starts to speak, when suddenly, from directly above your heads, you hear the loud chiming of bells. Then we're going to switch gears again! (laughs) The Crow's Nest Inn can be considered a second home to most of the inhabitants of Keystone. Run by the amiable and long-winded Arn and Ambershard, the inn is one of the few places where people can gather to drink, meet, and unwind. The crow's nest is square, brown, and weathered to hell. In a certain way, it's a great metaphor for Keystone itself. Situated on the main street, down by the docks, the crow's nest is one of the few buildings that colonists from the continent see as they arrive. And I'll actually point it out. It is... I think it's number three. It is number three. Yeah. Lost my place. Uh, as per its name, attached to the roof of the inn is an actual ship's, crow, a ship's crow's nest looming high about 20 feet off of the ground. The building is a dark brown oak, very different from the most of the buildings on the main street, which are made of that lighter oak, that, that lighter white oak that uh, once took up this whole peninsula. Inside the heavy door that creaks like an old man's bones, the warm exterior belies the the worn exterior belies the cozy warmth and comfort that resides inside. A fireplace crackles in the corner. A bard, usually playing upon the stage, 
and always, always there are folk here for a drink. The walls are made of red cedar, polished well with cedar oil, and the whole tavern smells of spice and wood smoke. In the center of the inn is a beam of wood that rises up through the ceiling. This is the actual mast, an oaken monolith that rises up through the roof and eventually becomes the crow's nest. It's a common tradition that as one enters or exits the inn, they give a night at the, ma the mast a quick whap with their knuckles for good luck. Behind the bar sits a squat dwarvish man with a receding hairline that falls into thick red curls. It's hard to tell where hair ends and beard begins. The beard leads down into two thick gold bands separated into twin tails. Uh, his eyes are a dull gray, but kind and eager. His weathered face is as ruddy red as his hair, probably on account of the mug of ale that's always within arm's reach. Arnon Ambershard is gesturing wildly at a female dragonborn of copper scales, pointing to a cloth folded up on the bar. It only makes sense, Estra. Spring is here and we are reopening. We do it every year. Estra Dower taps her claws on the bar in successive clicks as she lets loose a slow pent-up breath. There are those that claim the Crow's Nest Inn would be not what it is now if it weren't for the Copper Dragonborn. Arnon might be the face of the Crow's Nest, but Esther Dower was certainly the brains. But we literally never close. We're open all year, Esther explained in a way where it seems like she wasn't the first time she'd said it. Arnon kind of flops a hand at her dismissively. Yes, yes, but now the time when the lads and lasses who are holed up here all winter are out and about in the sun. It gets lonely here. Besides, it's tradition. We hang the sign. Estra's claw stopped clicking and she raises one scaled brow. Would you be the one to climb the mast and hang your cursed banner yourself? At the mention of climbing, the ears of a nearby tabaxi twitch upward and turn towards the conversation. Jacob, if you would like to describe your PC and what you're up to in the tavern here. Uh, well, Storm is a tabaxi. He is a cat folk. Um his coloration pattern whatever you want to call it is like a snow leopard uh, he's about six feet tall um uh, you can you can sort of see but not really see uh the musculature under his fur so i mean it, it's pretty clear that he's built but it's not ridiculous because he's covered in hair <laughs> uh, he is uh, he's wearing pants that only come down to about his knees so they're more like shorts but they probably didn't start that way <laughs> uh, he has a wide belt and he's got sort of one of those um, sort of a, a harness uh, you know how you see so many people draw a barbarian they'll have the strap that goes from the hip across to the other shoulder yes. and then in the middle there'll be a strap going from the middle across the other shoulder yes. and they always put a shoulder pauldron there he doesn't have a shoulder pauldron it's just, <laughs> it's just the strap just, just the strap uh, because, I mean it, it holds like you know a little quiver for his javelins and you know some other stuff like that but mostly it's just a strap that's there um, Tracy wants to know and, if he likes scritches Yes. <laughs> he with with he's he's a freaking cat. Uh, <laughs> but only on his terms. Quite possibly. Uh, <laughs> does the crow's nest It's a one story or two story building? I'm trying uh, to remember. It's a two story building and the the actual mast, the actual crow's nest is 10 feet up from the two, the second story. So it's okay, like I was trying 30, to remember thirty her... total feet. Oh, that's pfft, so what? Yeah, that's nothing. I have a climb speed of forty. <laughs> uh, no, I was just trying to remember if there were like open rafters or something. He would be up in the daggum rafters. Yes. Uh, but yeah, he's he's sitting there. Oh, there are. Yes. Oh yeah, he's it's up in the rafters. Like, um, like old timey uh, Western saloons where there's like a, a balcony that goes around the like interior of the oh nice so yeah there are definitely like rafters and hangable things oh yeah he's up in the rafters then <laughs> uh he would probably have his bone flute and just be playing on that uh but yeah at the mention of climbing he would he would drop down out of the rafters probably uncomfortably close climbing you want someone uh, to climb? 
Jesus, what? lad, you scared the hell of a living piss out of me. He will look at the floor to see if there is a puddle. <laughs> there is not a puddle. So you're confused as to why he said that you scared the piss out of him. <laughs> you, you seem okay. Yes, um... There's no piss. No, there's not. Uh, you said you can climb. Yeah. I climb everything. Oh, well. what do you want? What do you What do you want me to climb? Well, I've got this here banner. I want to attach it to the mast to bring in more guests. If you could climb up to the tippy top, tie this on, I'd be willing to pay you. Uh huh. Or I could owe you one. Whatever you ask of me. If it's in my power, I'll do it. Do you? What are you going to pay me with? Do you have something? Something fun? Something shiny? Um, he goes around behind the bar and then, like, just starts, like, rummaging through shit. And, um, he just has, like, he pulls out a wire whisk. That it, looks... This is pretty shiny. He'll take the wire whisk and he'll sort of drag his claws along it, so it's sort of twang, twang, twang. This is good. Fantastic. And he'll put that in his bag, and he'll take the banner up on the top. Yes, uh, he actually he'll lead you outside, folding up the banner and just kind of like stuffing it into your <laughs> your your straps. Uh, um, when you get to the top, just tie it to the flagpole right there, and you can actually see there is a little flagpole that's attached to the mast. All right, going. Okay, and he just. I mean, it's like walking on flat ground for him. <laughs> Tabaxi have claws, y'all. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna... Yes, so... You kind of hop up. You, there's actually a ladder, like, placed against the the side of the building. Um, Probably you, ignored you, that you completely. Just, yeah, don't even <laughs> glance at it. You're like, what are ladders for? I don't need ladders. Um, yeah. You just kind of clamber up onto the um, second floor, and there's like a little outcropping. So you, uh, on the first floor, you kind of get on top of it, and then you just leap to the next one, grab on with your claws, and pull yourself up. And you get to the mast, and it is. Uh, it only rises about 10 feet off, up off of the ground, like mm -hmm. off, off of the roof, like I said. But its surface has been abraded away by wind and salty air. Uh, its surface is as smooth as glass, but. You are many storm clouds, and scoff at such obstacles as smooth climbing poles. Uh, you have certainly climbed higher heights than this, but it will be fun nonetheless. Extracting your claws, you dig into the oaken mask. With barely a grunt of effort, you haul yourself up. Uh, your rear paws snick it into the wood, and with uh, cat-like grace, you begin, to, <laughs> you begin to climb up. Paw over paw, you pull yourself up, ascending swiftly and with great ease. You relish the climb, the way the ground falls away from you as you climb higher and higher. You reach the bottom of the crow's nest and kind of find it hard to to find a secure paw placement. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of those things where it's like the outcropping is a little too... Still, it's coming back, I'm sure, but... Yeah, I think so. Oh, yep, there it goes. Okay, cool. Sorry about that, y'all. My internet sucks. Okay, so... Um, yeah, to, to, to push off and where, what part did you, what part did I say? Uh, essentially we got to, he's at the top of the mast, but there's the little yeah. actual crow's nest and it's kind of difficult because from the mast. Yeah. Trying to find a, a good paw placement. So what, what you'll, what, what I'll have you do. Get up on top of that part. Yeah. So what I'll have you do is It's roll... like a, it's like a squirrel, like a squirrel trying to get around one of those bird feeder cards. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and roll an athletics or acrobatics to push off with your feet, paws, rear paws, and uh, to like reach up and grab the top. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. What is with the roll, right. you guys? If you want to use your dice, well, you're allowed to. If roll 20 is... Uh... I may have to. Oh, oh this is... Unless you just already tried like that. giving me advantage for no reason whatsoever, this is much funnier because he'll just try again when he falls oh, and yeah. lands on the ground. So you, you push off, leap up, and you have no lift, just 
you just push yourself back. So you just kind of fall backwards and then do a flip and land on your feet because you're a cat. Um, roll a dexterity saving throw. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba, dex save. Wow, a one and a two. You take four points of falling damage. This is fine. As you you land on it's... your feet, but it it hurts. Nope, this is great. This is hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll Arden like you you heard him just gasp as you completely miss, and he's like, "What are you trying to do? Get yourself killed?" Uh. I missed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so gonna try it again, and he there. goes zipping right back up the pole. <laughs> and this time you don't even pause. You get there and just whoosh, leap off. Do you want another athletics? Yeah, I do. Wow. Okay, roll with your real dice. Oh. Roll with your real. Dice. Roll with the <laughs> dice, man. <laughs> Holy shit. That's that is just amazing. Roll twenty sucks. It's just okay. it, hates, it hates good moments. Uh, well, I rolled a sixteen on the die, so that would be a twenty-three. <laughs> so yeah, and like I said, you just kind of it, it's almost like uh, a person walking, but faster. Uh, and you just climb up. You barely even pause to kick off, and you just grab it with one hand, and then like somehow backwards flip into it. It's kind of amazing. Uh, and you totally make up for the fact that you just ate shit. Made a complete ass of myself. You know what? <laughs> just because for, for grins and giggles and just to see. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Roll 20. Um, so yeah, you get up there uh, and Arnon seems more impressed now that you were able to do this like backward swinging flip. Um, mm, you can, while there are uh, taller structures in Keystone, um, you can still see over most of the one and two story buildings that reside in town, and especially this part of town, mm -hmm. most of them are smaller buildings. Um, and you even find yourself almost level with the Stone Temple's um, bell tower, but it's maybe like another 10 feet higher. And once again, you find yourself wishing that that tower wasn't made of like perfectly polished smooth stone because it would make a great climb otherwise bunch of jerks <laughs> uh, like just how dare I uh, I would yeah he's gonna stand there for a, at least right now and just look just staring off into the distance having like hey that's a cool view <laughs> after like five minutes goes by Ar Arnon just goes out and goes back into the bar and comes back out with uh, two glasses of ale and then just sits down on a bench outside. Just waiting to see how long this is going to be? <laughs> yeah. Oh god, what would I even roll to decide that he's... How long would I have him stare? Uh, wisdom saving throw? Sure, that's funny. Why not? Uh... Really? You roll a 19 on the wisdom <laughs> save? So you're you're appreciating it for about five, six, seven, eight minutes, and then um, you realize you see like in a in a not normally noticing this sort of thing, you see that Arden's waiting for you, and you're like, oh, he did give me a oh, shiny thing. That's true. All right, I will I will attach the banner flag thing to the flagpole. Um, uh, wait, did he give me anything to tie it on there with? Yes, there's um, there there's like rope there, and there's like okay. uh, little holes in it that you can thread it through. Okay, awesome. It's like I'm gonna have to climb back down and say <laughs> I don't have any rope. That's gonna be funny. Um, yeah, all right. So we'll get it tied on there, and sort of look over at Arnon, and just kind of wave. He waves back and then shouts up, shouts up at you. You're the right chancer, lad. Look at that tidy flag. That's pure Barry, I tells you. Now, uh, have I ever told you the story of? And just at that moment, when he's shouting up at you, about to tell you a story, uh, you oh, suddenly man, hear the ringing of bells. <laughs> I miss that guy. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll just, just hang curious. out with him as many times as you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm... Very curious. I'm sure Arnon has told me that story before. 
You probably don't remember, though. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, is that this might be something that he doesn't remember having heard. And that's he probably, loves that's probably you're his favorite person to talk to, because his stories are always, never, are always new for you. Okay. Shifting gears. Ringing of bells. Got it. Cool. Bells are ringing. And it's by... You can actually see it's from that stone tower. Ah, okay. One that you wanted to climb so bad. Sometimes, guards and soldiers go missing. It's not unheard of. There are things that go bump in the night, and occasionally folk will disappear into the forest. It's the job of the rangers to track them down. On the edge of Keystone's perimeter, west of Farmstead, which is... Right back over here. It's down here in the corner. This is a whole farming community. And I would say right on the edge of the forest here. Uh, on the edge of the forest, you see they're standing alone are two figures. Both of them are facing the forest that heads deeper into the wilds. The shorter of the two is a gnome. He wears a forest green cloak pinned to his chest by a cloak pin in the shape of the Green Hollow Trading Company symbol. His backswept shaggy brown hair seems combed into place by thick fingers, and his strong jawline is covered in a beard of medium scruffness. This is Corporal Gl Glimwit Starsbarrel, one of the leaders of the Rangers and a senior officer of the Green Hollow. Uh, and next to him is well, Chase's character. You would like to describe her. Okay, she's a blue hair genasi with purple hair that just kind of swirls about her, about her hair, head, and like gets animated. Uh, she's holding a rapier and a shield. The rapier is in her right hand, the shield in her left. And she's in black leather. Awesome. And, uh, you've actually done missions before with, uh, the, with the corporal. Uh, he immediately spotted your talent for tracking bipedal creatures and took it upon himself to further your training. And kind of... He... You're good at tracking uh, humanoids, and he saw that in you, and figured it was a useful skill. Um, he kind of leans, or not leans down, because he's actually about two feet shorter than you. Uh, <laughs> he looks up at you and he says, his trail led this way. Must have abandoned his post sometime last night. He used the raft across the river when Freddy the ferryman was sleeping. You can actually see, you've been following these um, boot prints that actually lead off into the woods. Well, let's follow him. You're one of the better trackers I've seen. If you can follow them, maybe we can figure out where he went. All right, let's go. Um, go ahead and roll a survival check. That's a 25. Holy dicks! <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the man you're following, a private by the name of Lance, was walking quickly. He had just passed this way in the night, so the tracks are still pretty fresh. And it helps that it's been a very wet spring so far, and it was also a very wet winter, like lots of snow. So his heavy boots sink into the earth, uh, depressing grass and leaves and leaving a rather clear trail, especially at your keen eyes. You spot it like almost like a... Uh, like, like when you put a waypoint in GTA and there's just a line. It's like that. It's basically like a line through the forest that you, you can just follow without, like, really even slowing your pace. Um, you follow his path, seeing a snapped twig here, a broken branch there. And after about 35 minutes, you kind of start to see what looks like other footprints that start to kind of converge onto this one. Eventually, there are three distinct footprints that are traveling kind of in a line together that met up with this person that you're following. So there are like three different sets of tracks? Yes. The two others kind of converge like say the one's walking down this way two others kind of converge like that and we're following and they're all human. The same direction. Um, they are all from what you can tell that it was, it's humanoid probably not much bigger or like hardier than private lance they don't sink as they sink about the same amount into the into the earth so they don't seem like they're bigger okay so he's either 
meeting up with somebody or Gunmo's kind of following behind, um, keeping an eye on his their surroundings. He's kind of the security, so that you guys don't get ambushed. But when you say okay. that, he kind of looks at the ground and sees multiple trails and uh, looks confused and a little concerned. Are we missing any other people? Not that I know of. I'll have to talk to the marshal when I get back. <laughs> Whose dog is that? <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? It's a dire wolf! It's We're dead! <laughs> The tire wolf. The <laughs> hellhound. It's that blink dog from before. <laughs> hey, can I roll to pet the blink dog? <laughs> <laughs> You're a cat. I don't know if they'd appreciate that. It's all right. It'll be fine. This is really. It... You're not even gonna let me try, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just for your best interest. Damn it! <laughs> well, I guess we'll keep following the footprints. After about uh, probably another ten minutes, you actually come across what looks like uh, like a, there's a, a break in the trees, and once you get to the break in the trees, there's a clearing, and inside the clearing, I would say there's about a dozen different footprints. Like some kind of yeah. meeting happened here. Well, it looks like some sort of meeting happened here. Um, <laughs> the corporal kind of circles the clearing, stops and sits back on his haunches, and studying the ground, reaches out to touch the earth, and looks around his surroundings again, and wipes the dirt from his fingers on his pants. Um, uh, go ahead and roll an, uh, an investigation check. As you kind of pour over yeah. these uh, different footprints to see what kind of information you can gather. Okay, what am I doing? Uh, investigation. Okay. Or you can Just do it you went if, if you're You went roboty, so I didn't actually hear you. Oh, okay, this will be great because my intelligence is like super crappy. Oh, here. So... No, instead of just doing it, yeah, do another survival then. Okay. <laughs> that makes more sense for the footprints anyway. That's definitely better. That was a 23 versus a 5. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Um, you can tell that the, the footprints seem to come from kind of all different directions of the forest. They're, uh, they were there for maybe maybe 20 minutes. But you have a feeling... You have a feeling that they were all walked off in the same direction, but as you go to follow that path, all signs of disturbance or footprints just stop. Hmm. You see this? He kind of moves away from where he was sitting on the on, like on the ground and comes and moves over to you. And leans back kind of confused. I mean, it's been known for some who are disgruntled with the Green Hall to leave and join the bandits. Maybe Mr. Lance decided he could make more money as a cutthroat. And they might have some kind of ranger of their own. I can, there's some magics that can block out a trail. But nothing like I've seen before. Did we like him? <laughs> Private Lance? Yeah. He was fine as a guard goes. He never complained. Didn't. I'll have to. I'll have to ask the marshal. She knew more about the men guarding the walls. Okay, so I shouldn't stab him if I see him? A light stabbing is fine. A survivable right. stabbing, so that we can question him. Stab, don't kill. Got it. He kind of like taps his nose, and um, we'll have to warn the marshal. Have a change of the guards, switch the men's patrols. Whatever knowledge Mr. Lance had won't be of much use. So you guys start to head back the way you came. 
not taking you as much time because you're not following the trail anymore. Uh, Glimwood doesn't say much, though. He'll occasionally point out some edible plants or medicinal roots, um, just conversationally. And then as you're walking and getting closer towards the, the forest's edge, you start to feel a slight tinge on your brand. And the closer you go, it actually starts to burn a little stronger. Finally, some kind of notion passes into your mind, and you turn your head and spy a fallen tree trunk hollowed out in the middle. One sec. I'll go over to the tree trunk. Uh, Lumet kind of stops and looks over his shoulder. I'd say it's, uh, mahogany. Um, as you get closer, it that that burning increases to like where it's almost unbearable and then come immediately stops uh, looks like a new drop has been designated okay you take a mental I note will. of its location yeah okay i'll come back later yes for when future instructions appear and so you turn back and follow Glenwood, who gives you kind of a strange glance, but it's very fleeting, and he immediately passes from his mind. I thought I saw something, but it was nothing. Fair enough. So, I don't know you very well. We've worked together a few times. You don't say much about yourself. What's there to say? Woman of action. I can understand that. That's true. <laughs> he kind of coughs awkwardly into his into his <laughs> fist, like he's not really good at making small talk, <laughs> and then just stops talking entirely. <laughs> <laughs> um, you arrive at the ferry, and you see Freddy the ferryman leaning back in a chair with a straw hat, straw hat covering his eyes, and you can hear a slight annoying sound. I'm going to sneak up on him and poke him. <laughs> you sneak up on this halfling who's, I would say, probably about a foot shorter than you. you just give him a jab, a jab in the ribs. He just starts awake. He's like, fuck! Oh! oh. Hey, Freddy! Fuck, what was his goddamn voice? <laughs> hey! He had, like, he had like a New York... Hey, a sorry, New I was uh, just <laughs> resting my <laughs> eyes. I'll, uh, uh... Sorry about that. Damn. Your fingers like steel. I work them out. Uh, they look like fingers. They're not really steel. Right. Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll pull you across now. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, he starts, like, rolls up his sleeves, and you can see just bulging forearms. Like, they're almost bigger than his head. <laughs> and, he, and he starts pulling <coughs> the ferry across. So, Corporal, you find the guy you was looking for. And Glimwit looks at him. It doesn't really it doesn't say anything. Like he he's always trying to wheel information out of him. All right, all right. Not much talk is here. Fine, that's good. And then, about halfway across the river. When you hear the chiming of bells. The gong of the magically amplified alarm bell in the stone temple resounded out over Keystone, warning the city of an attack on the northern gate. Glimwood snarls. How is that possible? Our patrols should have sounded the alarm. Damn it! I'll have to rally the rangers and get the marshal. Head to Ardmore, see what's happening. Help the guards at the gate if you can. And then right as he finishes speaking, the uh, raft hits the wooden dock and he just uses that to kind of springboard and he leaps almost four solid feet in the air, lands with a roll, mm -hmm. and which probably would look more impressive if he wasn't like three feet tall, and then just starts booking it, um, heading towards um, the south where the Green Hollows headquarters are and where the barracks are. She's going to turn back to Freddy and say, which way did he want me to go? He points, he points uh, down the road, which is here, I'll actually show you on the map. It is the Ardmore District right here, and this is the gate that he was talking about up here. 
Well, so you're, you, you've you arrived right you. here on the on the raft. Okay. So you start hoofing it towards the gate. Um. So, Caius, uh, Radiance's eyes widen in surprise. Alarms, but there has not been a real attack on Keystone in years. I must go and form the lie. If they've gotten to the gate already, I must make sure my blossoms are safe. Excuse me, and she exits the parlor and um, quickly rushes uh, out the exit. Uh, would uh, would Caius know, does the company have a designated rallying point when there's an alarm, or um, should he just... Yeah, it would just be to go go to that gate because there's a there are specific alarms for each for each gate the um the gong is for the the bell is for the northern gate and there is a uh, a horn like a like a for the western gate which is over here hmm. or that would be eastern i'm sorry that the eastern gate never eat soggy watermelons um so yeah it would be just oh. rally at the gate or uh, if you're in Cape District, it would be to go through over across the canal here. Mm -hmm. um, well, Caius would then sort of frustratedly sort of put his. Well, I guess the you know he he'll have to skip T. <laughs> um, but uh, are there how, like how, what what's the distance there? Is this something that? He may as well go on foot, or should he like try to find uh, um, a horse or something to get up there? Quickly? You can go on foot. It's not Keystone's not too big. Okay. A, a, a swift I'll just jog start. will get you there in probably five minutes. Okay. Well, he will. He will start heading that way, probably just slightly slower than he really should be going. <laughs> um, Fair enough. So that he is not the first one there. Um, that's a fair thing for the wizard to. Uh, uh, that's a strategy for a wizard, <laughs> or a tactic, whichever one fits. Come on, music, go faster to be cool and epic. Oh, I didn't hit play. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I did. Oh, it's going. It's going. It's it's starting out quiet. Yeah. Okay, it's probably gonna get louder, so I'll, I'll turn it down. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Kirith. Uh, Brother Tythor looks up in shock, gritting his teeth against the sound of the thunderous bell gonging from above. And you can feel the sound vibrating the very floor and walls that you're uh, standing within. Uh, when you look up into Tythor's eyes, they seem distant for a split second, like he's like looking off over a great distance. And he suddenly snaps to focus, his piercing gaze meeting your questioning. You must go. Hobgoblins have climbed over the gate. You must help the soldiers there. Hurry! I must wait for the, here for those who are injured in battle. Go! Okay, so he'll probably go, I guess go change, because he's not in his usual chain mail, so he'll probably go change. Alright. And start, head out. You start quickly. Actually, one of the acolytes comes over and starts throwing all the armor on you and helping you get into your uh, into your right. into your armor to cut down on the time awesome and then <coughs> snow uh are you both hear the sound of the bell and arnon just kind of sort of screams up what sort of dauber bampot will attack us when we're strongest you'd best get over there laddie i bet that axe will do short work for whatever fools thought to attack our home yeah <laughs> and he'll just come running down the mast, and um, let me see. If I'm looking at the map right, mm -hmm. it would be shortest to just swim across the channel right here, yeah? Um, How fast is your swim speed? 40. Oh, yeah, definitely. Holy crap. Nobody Holy crap. would expect a cat person to just dive into the water, but that's definitely what happens. Well, because I'm a Storm Herald barbarian, oh. and so right now I'm set to um, sea, like water storms, and the level 6 bit for the sea, I have resistance to lightning damage, I can breathe underwater, 
and I have a swimming speed that's the same as my walking speed and my climbing speed. It's yes. kind of cool. King of mobility. So yeah, I'll just go woo straight yeah, there. Yeah, you just go running um, like a bullet, and then you come to the end of a dock and just whoosh, just dive in and start swimming across. Okay, so switching gears here, or switching, I guess, maps. Actually, I should probably grab your. Mm -hmm. This music is not what I was looking for. Let's go with that one. <clears throat> Those are going to all of a sudden be a bunch of big figures that appear. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. yes. You guys are giants. Yes. <laughs> okay. stop, you stop. thought the large spell was good, buddy. You don't know the half of it. <laughs> so let us... Just one of your pinky toes would crush these dudes. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, what we're gonna do, everyone's gonna, we're all gonna, you all, you all arrive at the same time through the magic of RPGs and Dungeons and Dragons. So, you guys can place yourself anywhere behind this, whoops, this line, this big blue one. So, feel free to go anywhere you'd like behind that. I don't hear anybody. My Wait, no, nope, not hear anybody. Okay. I don't have a ruler. Oh, it's that it's that circle one underneath. Yeah, the circle with the with the um the ruler is the little, the little yeah. thing coming out of yeah. it. It's really weird. Yeah. They changed up everything. So yeah, you guys can it. go anywhere behind that that blue line. Uh I don't have control. Oh, right. I forgot Me neither. <laughs> My bad. <clears throat> Dragonborn is Kirit Sahin. That one is Many Storm Clouds. That one is Caius. Hey. And where'd Tracy go? Oh, you're all the way up there. Way up there on the left. And Gail, save. Okay, now everybody should have control of their tokens. I do. I do. Glorious. Uh, how do you? Oh, there we go. Okay, I got it. And then anywhere past behind this blue line, so you can be as close to it as you'd like, or as far away from it. <laughs> so you have to be behind it, mm. Mr. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> So, Question: Is this a wall or is this like a? It's just, just a little garden. Yeah, thing it's that we just can like a little. In? Yeah, you can stand in it. It's you know, okay. like an inch off the ground, and this looks like it's a you know, like just a wall, and there's like water on the other side. It's a gate, and there's a road on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, you see, there's like a little guard tower here um, where. You actually see a couple of um, dead bodies um, kind of sloped over the side. One of them's got a um, uh, like a black arrow, black fletched arrow in its throat, and the other one just kind of seems to be slit from ear to ear. Uh, there's a looks like there are four guards who are currently fighting, and you have there's quite a few hobgoblins. All right, so. For the first time uh, ever. Chris, can I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, can I, can I say that I cast my mage armor on my way yeah, over Yeah, of course, yeah. And okay. At the first sign of danger, you're like, mage armor. Mage armor. That'll last for eight hours. Yeah, he's like, okay. a sort of grumbling hole. He's like, well, I had my uh, prepared spells for a day of not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. 
Um, okay, okay, cool. Everybody go Thanks. ahead and roll for initiative, and I will add everybody's... And... Let's see. Mm -hmm. I... Don't remember. Do I have advantage on initiative? I do. As a I think I, I think do. you do. I'm trying to remember if I've already got it or if I don't get it until level seven. Hmm. Uh no, I get it at level seven, so I don't have it yet. Hmm. Gotcha. Okay, cool. You confused because you were flipping between ranger and barbarian. Hmm. It's true. Bum, 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 bum. Where's my D20? All right, so initiative. There we go. Did it go that time? Hey, there it went. Poor guards. So you see, um, it looks like uh, five um, hobgoblins who are clad in like very like cloth armor and. Um, like very dingy looking um, steel caps uh, and then you see what looks like two leaders in the back wearing more like patchwork armor um, that's metal and you see one with a staff in the, in, that's sitting in, at the very entrance to the gate and it looks like Ooh. part of the gate is kind of scorched with fire mm-hmm I have to roll for this one. Ooh. I need to add to initiative. screen probably disappeared for a split second because I had to minimize for half a second, but I will be back with it now. That's huh, weird. All my spells are going on. Nope. Well, that's no bueno. That's okay. I bought them on another sheet. That's good. They weren't there, though. I put them in. And then these dopes. <laughs> Fucking sevens. All right. Descending order. Uh, many storm clouds. What is your and, and Gail? What are both of your um, dexterity modifiers? I think it's the same plus four. Say I've got plus four. I don't think I have that. So I think you guys both go first. Uh, do you have a preference, Tracy? Would you like to go before me? Yeah, you or... can go first. Alright, that's cool. Um... Okay. Oh, so Storm! We've got... It is your turn! One, two, three guys in a line, and those two... Yeah. I'll go five, ten... Right over here, just because we're fun that way. Oh God! Oh, and do do you do you do flanking rules? Yeah, we do, I do do flanking rules. Yeah, okay. that, and that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I like it. He's not the brightest. Okay. I do my best to work with two dudes in, on either side of me. I mean. <laughs> All right, so we'll start off by using our bonus action to rage. Yay, raw. And since I'm a C setup right now, when I activate rage, and as a bonus action on every turn that I'm raging after that, 
I can choose a target within 10 feet of me and tell them that they have to make a dex save or take a d6 of lightning damage. Cool. Which one are you going to pick? Uh, let's go with the one on the left side of the screen. So and so that's going to be a DC 14. And if he makes it, he only takes half of that six. But yeah, that guy right there. Cool. What's the DC? 14. It's not bad. I rolled a 14, actually. So he, All right. Then he, you take he, three. He kind of reach out with your with your claws extended towards him or you kind of point your axe at him and there's this like crackling energy that surrounds him and it just courses through his body he's like Grr! um definitely isn't pleased with that uh, and the cool if he f does that mean he's attached right it's attached no to him? oh you just no it's just uh, yeah it's just a thing that i can do as a bonus action Dope. and it, it activates when i go into rage uh, or I can activate the storm aura when I go into a rage and as a bonus action again any time that I am raging. Uh, like if, I, if I'm if i attuned for fire for the desert, then everybody within 10 feet of me takes uh, two fire damage. No, I'm sorry, uh, it would be three right now. Uh, if I'm tundra, then everybody gets temp hit points. Very nice. It's kind of a fun little thing. I like it. It's really dope. But we're gonna look at that same guy, and we're gonna do some reckless attacking. Hell's yeah! Yay. I mean, it, so, yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like they've <laughs> got it, man. Well, right? <laughs> so, okay. I'm gonna guess that a 25 will hit that dude. Yes, definitely. <laughs> For 11 slashing damage. Holy shit! Um. <laughs> so yeah, you um. You kind of extend your hand and your axe, and he gets electrocuted, and then you just heft your axe, take a huge swing, just cut his head right the fuck off. Awesome. Oh, dang. Okay. Gonna turn right around, and the dude who was on the other side of me, he's gonna get a swing from the axe as well. Uh, does a 13 hit? Probably um, not. You might be surprised. Let's see here. A 13 does not hit, actually. Kai just right. clangs off of his armor, and he growls at you, but there's a little bit of fear in his eyes. I'll growl right back. Uh, but that is my turn. Nice. I'm going to move to right there, Okay. and that's my turn. Dig it. All right. Gale! Okay, I'm trying. For a bonus action, I am going to cast Zephyr Strike, which basically means that my movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks, and at some point I can do a D8 damage to somebody whenever I want to. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to move up to there, and then I am going to hit him with my sword, or try to. I believe in your skills. Let's go. This dice here. Does an 18 hit? 18 does just hit. Ooh, good. Ooh, just. I don't like that just bird. So. That's 13 damage. You have a rapier, right? Yeah, plus one rapier. As you step up to him, he snarls at you and you just dive forward and stab him through the throat. And through the open mouth, and then just pull it out, and he just <laughs> crumples to the okay. ground. Okay. Jesus. So then, I got 20 feet of movement left. Well, I'll just zip over. Hold on. I'll hit that button. Zip over to this guy, and I'll try to hit him. <laughs> Probably not going to hit because that's only an 11. Yeah, 11. This guy, for some reason, his maybe he has better armor than everybody else or something, but he takes a <laughs> he takes a swing from uh, Storm's axe, and it just kind of glances off the armor, and you go to step forward to jab into in between his plate, but he kind of shifts and just skates off the edge. Okay. <clears throat> All right. 
That's it. All right. Next up, the Hobgoblin Captains. This one, next to, or in front of this guard, is going to take a huge swing at him. That's going to be a hit. He just brings a huge um, greatsword down, and this person tries to block it with like a hand and a half sword. The blade just gets forced out of the way, and just he, you see this greatsword just bury into this person's uh, into this person's chest cavity. He just pulls it out with like a shoulder jerk, and they just slump to the ground dead. Um, seeing these new uh, arrivals who are kind of murdering his men. Uh, he's gonna use his movement to. How far is that? Yeah. He's gonna move his movement, just step right on this guy's body. Oh god. Yeah. You know what, actually? actually? He's actually gonna go there. Steps up next to his compatriot. Um. Uh, he's gonna take a swing. He's gonna take a swing at Snow. At this great barbarian cat man. <laughs> cat I like how you just call him. I just like how you call him Snow. That's that's how that that that's canon. <laughs> oh, did I say Snow? I'm sorry. It's yeah, he's he's a, it nah, comes you're fine. Storm. <laughs> that's great. That's <laughs> awesome. We haven't even gotten to him being lousy with names yet, so <laughs> that's gonna be a that's gonna be great if people are calling him Snow instead of Storm. Um, it's gonna be a eighteen. That'll hit. Okay. Yeah. He's gonna use his martial advantage to deal extra damage because he's within five feet of an ally. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> oh. So you take 22 points of damage, reduced by half. So that's 11. Got it. So he comes, uh, you're kind of facing the other hobgoblin, so you don't quite see him. You see him in his periphery, and you just try to move out of the way, but his, the very tip of his greatsword actually sweeps up through your ribs, kind of grazes a couple of rib cages, uh, and uh, you kind of spin and, uh, and challenge him with your... Awesome, cool, glittering cat eyes. <coughs> um, and that's his turn. The other one. Yeah. He's gonna. Push Is he gonna through. bring it to? Yeah, he's gonna push through. Actually, awesome. he's gonna come up through. This, this guard's gonna get a hit on him. That's actually, well, that's actually Maybe. a hit, surprisingly. There, he rolled a 22. But I rolled a 1 on damage. We nicked him. Yeah, he, got, he <laughs> just stabbed the him flesh wound. in the calf. Got him for 3 damage. Um, and he comes lumbering towards you, Gale, bringing down his sword in a huge arcing swing. going to be a 19 to hit. Uh, yeah, that just hits. He's going to use his martial advantage to give himself a couple extra die. No, I don't like that. I am curious. Can they do that every turn, or is that no, like a it's... gotta take a short rest thing? Um, yeah, let me double check. I'm pretty sure they can do it once per round, but I'll double check here. Once per turn, the hobgoblins can deal an extra 2d6 to a creature. It hits with a weapon attack. Okay. The creature's within five feet of an ally of that hobgoblin. All right, that's cool. Um, Sitting so here trying to think of it's like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like hobgoblins a lot. They're, they're really fun, uh, lower-level enemies. Except for the, like, the normal ones kind of suck. You guys just sweeping them in half. 
Oh, come on. Both of us missed that one dude. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so that's 14 damage. And I maintain concentration. And then he <laughs> kind of uses that that arcing swing as it kind of... You you step out of the way of most of it, uh, but the, the sword hits you. Instead of breaking through your armor, it just kind of bruises your shoulder really badly. Uh, you know you're going to feel that tomorrow. And he comes back with this arc behind him to try and swipe at... Uh, swipe at... I almost called you Snow again, Storm. <laughs> Remember, so he's got advantage on me because of Reckless. If that makes any difference. Um, it, it does. I rolled a 2, and then I rolled a 19. Uh, but he can't use his martial oh, damage, so it's just 2 d <laughs> That's 11 damage. Is that half to 5 or to 6? Uh, half to 6. Gotcha. Okay, that's the those those hobgoblins turn. The hobgoblin captains are done. Uh, Kirith, what is your dexterity? It's zero. Uh, <coughs> okay, yeah, they have a plus one. So the staff wielding hobgoblin surveys the battlefield. Um, <clears throat> it's going to move. Get a better lay of the land. And he's going to cast a spell. And it's going to be... Counter spell. <laughs> okay, you're going to counter spell? <laughs> yep. uh, it just automatically fails. Yeah. He was going to cast Gust of Wind, and he was going to try to push the Barbarian uh, away from his, uh, mm -hmm. his his men, but you see him raise his hand, and his a rune on his hand yep. starts to glow, and you're just like, I don't fucking think so. Yeah, what the thing this battle needs is not more spells. <laughs> so it just fizzles and looks around angrily and then sees you and just kind of snarls at you. Um, I don't think he can do anything else. Uh, nope. So, yeah, that's its turn. Gareth. Okay, I, let's see, I'm thinking here, I'm going to cast Beacon of Hope. Oh, nice, I love the spell. That is my, I think that's my action. Yes. Yeah. Um, you still and have a bonus action and a movement. I'm going to stay right, right where I am. Okay, cool. Uh, as a bonus, I will do, uh, hmm, I'm going to do spiritual weapon. Okay. And I will put it right. And I think for, just for reference, I think, um, Storm is the one who took the most damage so far. Okay. I don't think it was too uh, bad, though. It was... No, no. No, I took, uh, when it was 20? all said and done, 21 yeah. points of damage altogether. Oof. I'll put the spiritual weapon right oh, here. No. Oh, Sorry, oh. I took 17 because I'd had four from the missed jump right here. earlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, what, what, what kind of weapon is it? Uh, it's a mace. Okay, I'll try. Okay, that's the mace. 
<laughs> oh dang it, it's not connected. It's got a it's like feather a tree. Biscuit. I think it looks like a feather <laughs> It looks like one of those um one of the trees. Spiritual popcorn. The, yeah. It looks like one of those trees in the Lorax. Uh, yes. What, where did you want it's it again? Right here. Okay. <clears throat> I'll get you a real one for later. Sweet. I think I have one somewhere <laughs> in my in my library here, but I have no idea where it is. And I think I can go ahead and swing with it. As yeah. part of the casting, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can. Da, 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 da. Spiritual weapon. It's a spell attack. There we go. Yep. Here's a mace. Fuck my little lollipop thing. Uh, yeah, it's a spell attack. Uh, here, okay, here we go. Oh, nice. Uh, did that? Well, it it swung. It did. Um, <laughs> it kind of boffs him lightly on the back. He glances over his shoulder and then ignores it and keeps uh, focusing on <laughs> forward. Shit. Cut <clears throat> uh, yep, that's my turn. All right. Caius. Okay. So, my plan keeps evolving. Uh, is this is this part here? Is that a wall? No, can I you can not see, or is that, that just you can just like stand okay, there. okay. So, um, Caius will take a look at the staff wielding hobgoblin, and we'll cast a spell. Okay. Uh, and he will just say, Moi partangus ne, and he will cast. Why, why did it say that? Hang on. He didn't actually give the spell card. Uh, he will cast Blindness, Deafness oh, uh, to dicks. blind it. <laughs> Okay. Um, and... There. Okay, cool. So DC 15 con save. Got you. <laughs> Not a one. Yes. <clears throat> Damn it. Okay, so he is so he is blinded uh, and can can make the save again, attempt the save again at the end of each of his turns. Got it. Uh, so and then let's see here. Caius is just gonna walk just just over this side behind the wall of allies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a very smart decision. Um. Oh, and if you guys ever need to whisper, so, yeah. if you want to tell me secrets or anything, if you hit. Uh, instead of putting the space there, it's slash W. Just do slash W and then type Chris, and you'll be able to send me sneaky whispers. And I will mm. be doing that to you as well. Awesome. Uh, so that is action and movement, so Caius is done. Nice. Very effective turn. Let me put a little thingy on him so I know <laughs> that he's... He's no longer able to see. Is there like an eyeball? Yeah, there's an eyeball. His eyes are bleeding, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see. There's blood in my eyes. Um, okay, it's the guard's turn. So, Keystone guards are going to try their damnedest. That guy misses. The guy in red misses that hobgoblin. Um... Uh, guy in purple. Ah! He hits! Dealing five damage to this hobgoblin. You see this one kind of like just jumps out of the way of a cut and comes in with like a with his short sword and inflicts a wound on the uh, on the hobgoblin's shoulder. And then the archer. He hits. He's aiming for that mage, actually, so he would have advantage. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Another three! <laughs> really should buy higher, better, better guards for the, uh, the wall. 
They need to take the suction cups off the end of the arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, these are my nerf arrows. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Now it's the tiny hobgoblin's turn. Um, this one is going to shift over here on top of his friend's corpse. I'm going to move the friend's corpse over there. I'm going to send it to the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not dead yet. Don't destroy me. <gasps> no, I am. <laughs> You're damaging the ingredients. <laughs> Don't they know anything? Um, in there, I'm gonna focus fire you. I think. Well, they have advantage. Say so he had advantage without having to move there. That's a fair point. I forgot about that. He didn't know that. <laughs> That's uh, fine. I, even with what advantage, do I don't think I hit. Uh, hold on. My armor class is 17. Yeah, no, he doesn't hit. I rolled an 8 plus like 3 or something. Jeez. Comes at yeah, you with a no. long sword and you just, it like sticks in your skin, you just flex and just pops out. Um, this other one. He's gonna just take a, take a stab at that guard who almost fucking basically one shot at him. Okay. That's an D8. Okay. Um, this guard gets run through by this uh, by the hobgoblin's longsword. Just kind of. Okay, top of the round. Many storm clouds. All righty. Oh wait, actually, uh, this guy, this other gob hobgoblin, takes a swing. So one over here on the left. The one by the staff. Dude, yeah. okay. He's gonna roll a one and miss. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Did they get two attacks? No. That's it. All right. Well, uh, that guy who came running up behind me and stabbed me for a whole bunch of hurt—that wasn't very nice of him. I'm not pleased with him. So. I'm going to bonus action pop him with some storm aura. Okay, he succeeds. Alright, so he takes two lightning damage and then we'll start chopping at him. 23 will hit for 17 damage. Holy crap. <laughs> That's kind of nice. I like that. And I'm going to Assume he's not dead. Nope, he's still up. Cool. Does an 18 hit? Um, 18 just hits. Awesome. Another 12 points of damage. Nice. Uh, in a flurry of axe blows, you um, bring it around your shoulder, slam it into his side. You see it kind of dents the armor in, uh, constricting his breathing. And then you bring it down on top of his shoulder and crunch it into his into his collarbone. You feel it break the bone and kind of sink in. But he just pushes off of you, pushes you off of him, and kind of like literally stands in front of you, kind of swaying back in place. Like I'm barely here, sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I I will snarl at him, just all big teeth and growling and. He takes five points of snarl damage and dies. <laughs> I mean, if I can do that, awesome. But uh, <laughs> mentally, he does. Which guy were you hitting? Uh, uh, that was right the guy to my north. Oh, okay. I thought it was right the guy. There. This guy. No, no, the because this was the guy who had yes, originally it's, run down it's okay, and they were both, stabbed me. I'll just switch what their health was. Oh, okay. Because they had the same amount of health. Um. Oh, I was going. Reckless again. Sorry. No, I that's okay. I kind of figured you were. Yeah. Um, so I guess it would have been a 24 to hit on that second one. Not that it makes any difference. But yeah, everybody will have advantage <laughs> to hit me again. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, that's uh, action, bonus action. I'm going to stay right there in the middle of this party. Got a whole bunch of friends to dance with. It's great. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Gale. Okay, because now I can set this up in my second round. I'm going to set up my planar warrior, warrior ability, which I will just copy and paste into here. So, yep, okay. 
I shall choose the person right in front of me. Dig it. And then I will try to hit them. Hold on. Let's see my number here. That's a 25 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. So now this is all going to be force damage. So that'll be 2d8 plus 7. So that's 14 plus 7 is 21. Okay. Nice. And I believe I just gotta read the wording on this. The next time you hit that, yeah, okay, just that one. So then I will try to hit it again. So that would be a fifteen plus twenty-three to hit. That hits. And ten damage. And then, because you can't take attack of opportunity. I'm moving. They both swipe at you, but it's just they swipe at empty air. And that's as, my turn. They swipe at empty as you air. Move by, as you move by, Caius just sort of points over at the uh, the hobgoblin with the stem and just says, Well, he's not. He can't see right now. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Um, nice. Okay. Now it's the Hobgoblin Captain's turn. Both of them are very, very injured. Um, I think they're going to go all out on, uh, the person who's been doing, well, the, there are two people who've been doing a crap ton of damage to them, but there's only one within reach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Come on, he's, guys. He, in his rage, has left himself wide open nope. to attacks. Nope. This is what I'm here for. There's four dudes all standing there just wanting to poke me and bring it on. <laughs> uh, okay, this first one. Advantage. 25. That'll hit. And then the second one for his attack. Natural 20. Cool, Ooh. cool, cool. Um, so I'll roll his first. He's gonna use the marshal, his marshal on his first attack, because that he would just use it right away. Nope, that's fine. Okay, that first attack's twenty-one. So that would have to ten or eleven. Eleven. And then his second attack, which is the crit. Mm -hmm. Which is 20 even. So that would go to 10. Okay. And then the guy behind him, or behind you. Yep. He's gonna blearily, both of them are just blearily swinging at you, but just because you're recklessly attacking is the only reason that they're able to even hit you. Uh, That one is my brain. Uh, that was a t modified twenty. Yeah, that'll hit. And then his second attack. That's a three, uh, nineteen. That'll hit. Okay, first attack the martial advantage. Yep. Oof. 23 points of damage. So that would be 12. Yep. Oops. And then his second attack. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nine. Would we'll go to five. Alright, cool. So just... It's just... Axe blows, or not... Axe blows, and followed by um, huge great swords. Just the, these huge, heavy weapons. There's blood yep, flying just... every direction imaginable. This whole courtyard is painted with m multiple species blood. Uh, mostly hobgoblin, though. I would say a good, like, 80% of it's hobgoblin blood. Okay. It's the end of their turns. Uh, it is now the blinded mage's turn. <laughs> uh, 
Um, trying to think of what his what what his what his idea would be. Uh, he could run. <laughs> he could. Although Actually, he wouldn't know the direction to get out. <laughs> yeah. He has a general idea of where he was facing, but uh, it might be hard <clears> to get through the gate. Um, what are, what are, how smart are hobgoblins? Yeah, not too bad. Oh, actually, this one's pretty smart. Um, so does it, did, would he have access to something like Dispel Magic or something that he could try to heal himself he of that? He does not, actually. Okay. He's a very, <laughs> very attacky sort of individual. No, that's fair. He's a hobgoblin. Yeah. And Which I also is feel why like I want hobgoblins, him or at least most hobgoblins, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to generalize, but most hobgoblins are pretty selfish. So what he's actually going to do, he's going to cast Fly on himself. <laughs> okay. And oh, that's funny. He's going to... You know what, though? Mm-hmm. I'm going to counterspell him just because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he starts to cast Fly on himself, uh, and we need, to, we need to do a roll. Contested roll. Mm, no, Fly is a third level spell, isn't it? His counterspell was, was Oh, automatic. it's the third or level. Okay, yeah, yeah, so no, it just automatically... He he starts to cast Fly on himself, and he goes to jump, but then he just, like, hops. <laughs> and then he curses in Hobgoblin. <laughs> Um, no, you speak hobgoblin, but you can assume it was pretty filthy. <laughs> Is it related to goblin? I actually, yeah, you <laughs> Caius, Caius knows goblin. <laughs> I would say it's. Um, he says um, something about your mother and shit-covered <laughs> trolls. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's his that's his go. He's gonna just start staggering towards the gate. He has a general idea. He push, fucking bumps into this guy, uh, and then <laughs> the <laughs> that that guard gets a swing on him. Staggers up the stairs. Yeah, exactly. He gets advantage. Damn. Okay, that's pretty good. Wow, <laughs> nice. Takes seven damage. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yay for the guard. Yeah, for a D6, that's not bad. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that's his, that's his turn. Gareth! Okay. Um, let me see. If I move here, I can touch many, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to cast Cure, cure Wounds at level 3. Nice, so that's awesome. And, be and because of Beacon of Hope, he yep. gets uh, the full die number. Yep. So, so that times would be three. 24 plus your Wisdom mod? Yes, which is... Uh, two? Two. So 26 points? Nice. And as a, I think a bonus, I can swing with the. Yeah, definitely. Um, Go ahead and swing. So you reach out and touch Storm on the shoulder, and in their in their rage, they turn around and like like they're about to bite your hand, and then you like heal them and and he and stops the stops the biting. He's like, oh, friend. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll swing with the uh, spiritual weapon. Nice. Uh, Natural, which guy are you swinging this, at? This guy right here. Uh, uh, this guy right here. Okay. Ah, okay. And it's a natural 20. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So that is... Solid. I think it's... Because I'm level 6, I think it's 2d8? Sounds right to me. If I'm not sure... I'm... Or spiritual weapon, I think it's... Or just a d8. I think it's a D8 plus your spell modifier, and then you can cast it at a higher level, and it adds, you know, another D8 and another D8. Okay, after so that. it's just the one D8 because the natural twenty. It's still two D8, All right? 
Right, yes. yeah. Yeah, okay. you can just roll the 1d8 and just double it. That's, that's okay. How do it. So that is 14? It's, uh, the mace lifts up like this and just goes, boom, and just hits the top of his, like, metal skull cap, crushes it down into his skull, and then you hear the, like, the snap of his skull break in and stab into his brain, and, like, blood and, you know, viscera leak out of his face as he just hits the ground. And, uh, yeah, that's my turn. It takes a little bit of magical effort to get that mace out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my turn. This is, this is a pretty good turn. Some he he heal, healing and damaging. All right, Caius. Uh, did the, did the hobgoblin mage, uh, save on his last turn? Oh, I didn't, I forgot to roll uh, that. Uh, he did. So he's no longer blinded. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So, in that case, um, Caius is going to, first of all, let's see here. Well, yeah, he's going to... He's going to uh, look at um, Storm, who is just sort of surrounded and crowded, mm -hmm. and is going to uh, cast his spell. He, th he thinks that uh, he it's too it's too crowded around there, so he's going to um, give Storm the room, and he's going to cast enlarge. Oh Jesus! She's gonna push everybody oh, out. Boy. Oh boy! Oh boy! Uh, I'm assuming you're willing to suddenly turn to a, a yeah. larger cat man. Cat man. So, I hope you guys. You are now. You are now officially fully Hulk. Uh, <laughs> God, that's raging cool. and. Doubles on all dimensions. In the room, creature object. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I mean, you just so the only <laughs> grow, start growing, be, and they all just get put. So I add another D four damage to any attack that hits. Otherwise, yeah. Um, we'll just we'll say uh, that uh, Kirith just steps out of the way, seeing you start to grow. Like, ooh, um, your mace kind of gets pushed to the side a little bit. <laughs> That's fine. Boom. <clears throat> Boom. Oh, wait, you're more like there, though. <laughs> Jeez. Actually, here, yeah, you wouldn't have had to. Nice. Boom. Okay. Now you're very large. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Caius will mutter something about. Actually, he will. He will start stepping back a little bit, and he'll mutter something about the other hobgoblin being by the door and he will move back about 10 feet gotcha. and that's his turn very nice um it's the guard's turn um i think i mean this guy hasn't gotten hurt at all so he's just gonna keep going for it oh, that's a miss the archer is gonna uh, <laughs> shoot the fleeing mage I rolled two fives in a row. Um, <laughs> the archer looks awesome. over at the at the swordsman. And he's like, "Twinsies!" Um, and then it's all the little hobgoblins' turns. And by all, I mean the two that are left. Um, I think this one sees the mage leaving, and is like, "I'm getting the fuck out of here too." Uh, he starts dashing for the for the door. And that guy gets a swing on it. 16! Yes! Does 6 damage. Takes away most of it, like half of his health. <laughs> Just carves off a huge portion of his lower back uh, as he turns and runs away. Okay. Back to the top of the round. 
Awesome. Uh, due to the north that I had been beating on earlier, let's have him make a save and see if he's going to take six or three damage. He takes six damage. Awesome. Ooh. Oh, wait. <laughs> so you point your axe at him, and this, like, electric energy shoots out, and he goes... And then blood just kind of, like, pulls out of his mouth and nose, and then he just falls to the ground dead. Sweet. Oh, decisions. Do I stay right here, or do I chase after those jerks? Uh, are they, like, actually there at the gate, yes. or did they run through? No, they're going to take their next turn to go through the actual gate. And... Well, you do have two, two pretty little, like, uh, smashables. That's right true. There. And they've been assholes this whole time. <laughs> that is true. Uh, the other slide. guard captain. Uh, I'm going to turn around, and we're going to go reckless on him. Right. So, 23 to hit. Yep. Uh, that would be 16 plus another d4, so 19 damage to him. Axe down on the front of the head, just sp splits his face, and then stops, like, catches in the sternum, and then it kind of slaws out, and then you just pff, wrench your axe out of his out of his sternum, and he falls to the ground. Awesome. Little bitty goblin guy who's right there, we're going to go reckless on him as well. 19 to hit. Uh, so that's 14 plus another d4 is a total of 18 damage to him. I mean, I might as well, because he's like basically the last person. How do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, I mean, we split the one guy vertically. Let's split this one horizontally. <laughs> so it's... And then you rip it out and come back like this. Bring it up in a huge golf swing, catch him right in the taint, and just split. And you feel probably it probably catches on his pelvis and lifts him up oh. off the ground a little bit, and then oh, yeah. falls to the ground, almost wrenching the axe out of your hand. But you're not you're a barbarian. You're not gonna let go of your axe. You awesome. Rip it out of his grundle, uh, <laughs> and everyone's kind of staring at you like, "Holy fuck, that was gruesome." Dude, I've still got movement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna run right over there and I'm gonna roar at them like just uh, some sort Very of demon. Very deep bassy roar. It sounds a lot less like a cat and more like a saber toothed tiger. Yeah. Very awesome. Okay. That's my nice. turn. Gail. Okay, well then I'll use my bonus action to Misty Step 30 feet. Oh, God. <laughs> and then I'll run 30 feet to say, excuse me, excuse me. So you me. just like <laughs> disappear and reappear all of a sudden, and Caius, you're like, oh, that was Misty Step. <laughs> and then, so then I'll reappear here underneath the kitty. <laughs> and no, no, then no. I am oh, yeah, now. You are gonna... kind of underneath him, huh? Yeah. And then I'm going <laughs> to invoke. I um, yeah, I can before the once before the spell ends, I can give myself advantage and give an extra d8. So that's a natural twenty. Oh, dicks! Nice. <laughs> and I'm going after the mage. Okay, gotcha. He uh, still has know? a decent amount of health left too. So Maybe. I get an extra d8. So that's good. Add yeah. d8 to the eight. <laughs> So, 11, 22 plus, what is it actually, plus another seven, 29 damage. Damn. <laughs> like I said, had. So yeah, you start running, and as you're running, trigger the spell, and you just flash forward and reappear, still just charging ahead. Kind of slide underneath uh, Storm's parted legs and then come up in a huge thrust up into his into his chest, slipping in between the ribs and puncturing a lung. Cool. Then for my second attack, and he kind of 
Okay. He spews blood. He's in dead, face. right? I'm assuming the mage is dead. No, he's still alive. Really? Yeah. Wow. He's just having the worst yeah. day, well, day a, ever. That's a 26 to hit. Okay, that hits. And another 12. Okay. Um, you kind of wrench it out and come and give it a nice, a nice sling, trying to cut through his throat, and you 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 kind of hit um, a little farther than you had intended to, kind of bouncing off of his uh, shoulder bone and nicking an artery, but he he's still standing, but just barely. Wow! I can't believe he's still standing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he will be for very much longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think that's all I can do. They're dead. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's not alive anymore. Uh, okay. It is now the mage's turn. Um, he sees death approaching. <laughs> so in a couple different forms he, um, yeah in, in many forms uh, there are many paths to his death um, but I think he's going to choose a specific one. <laughs> he snarls and says um, uh, you will not last long here and then Fireball spells the ground at his feet. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, shit. So it's his attack save. No, I'm excited about this because I can possibly uh, take zero damage from this. He does a, he does a fourth level this. fireball right at his feet. I can possibly take zero damage from this. <laughs> Fuck off, bro. Nice. <laughs> I just have to make the save. Okay. And I have advantage on this save. Yeah, and I can off. use my reaction for By shield everybody, master. everybody, I mean yeah. uh, Gale and... Chaos and also that hobgoblin. Okay, so I rolled a natural 20, so I'm gonna make the save, use my shield master to take zero. Nice. Ta-da! <laughs> and kind of like, like Wonder Woman coming out of the trench and uh, and just like taking all that fire, except it's actual fire. <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess that a 23 saves, so half damage for me. Okay, that so mine was like 29 was what my actual rule was because I get a plus two. Golly. Shieldmaster is good. <laughs> I almost took that. Yeah, he was going to fireball That's you guys as he good. left, but then you all got all up in his face. And he's like, you know what? Dying by my own hand is better than dying by getting my rumble <laughs> split in half or getting punctured through many times. <laughs> Um, well, at least many times more than he already. Did. I I think he deserves an, a round of applause for like achieving something this round. So. <laughs> he didn't get counterspelled that time. I moved out of counterspell range. Ah, that's fair. Uh, fucking dicks. <laughs> uh, not you guys, just in general. <laughs> <laughs> Did he kill his partner? Oh yeah, that guy. Oh yeah. He had like five health left. I didn't even bother. Um, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I want to know if he died. It'd be funny if he didn't die. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's no way he's surviving this. Uh... <clears throat> Thirty-seven damage for half. Oh, so crap. half of thirty-eight is nineteen. Then do you get to have it again or no? No, I'm I am not a bear barbarian, oh, and I'm okay. not set bear to. Uh... <laughs> bear, 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 bear. I don't have my aura set for desert, so I am not resistant to fire right this minute. So nineteen. Do 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 do. Okay, kitty. Oh, yeah, I still got 26 hit points. Mildly singed. What the crap? <laughs> mm. Yeah, you took a crap ton. Actually, yeah, that's pretty amazing. What was the, the lowest well, you were at? 
Uh, lowest I was at, I had 19. 19? Before. Nice. Uh, so I gave him 26? <clears throat> yeah. Cleric and I took Shield Master just for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, when the smoke clears, both of those hobgoblins do not exist anymore. Uh, they have been scattered oh, to man. the four winds. Uh, I will look around. Don't see anybody else, right? Um, no, and you peek outside the gate, and it seems that uh, whatever whatever contingent was there you see there are a couple dead guards out front and also a couple of dead hobgoblins um but uh it seems like whatever contingency came here to do whatever did not succeed awesome i will turn to gail and say you poked him so hard he exploded i know it was easy <laughs> as you say that so you feel the effects of this actually how long does that go um uh, i think it's just a minute yeah so as you say that you feel the effect of the spell is like off you just as you're talking your voice is like stops booming as much until it's just no your normal booming tone <laughs> oh hey everybody's not small anymore you're all like normal size again i'm the tallest once again <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah after, after that happens um you guys all kind of take notice that the courtyard is very still. The the gong is no longer gonging. Whatever acolyte was up there keeping watch on the courtyard um, saw you guys handily take care of it. And uh, look, one guard survived. Two of them actually. This guy's just like very oh, yeah. camouflaged yeah. in the grass. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I didn't even I see didn't him. Even. <laughs> <laughs> That's why nobody saw him. He was hiding in the grass, <laughs> taking pot shots. Uh, the boat. This guy. Just falls to his knees, trembling. Like, he cannot believe he survived that without getting hurt once. Uh, Caius will sort of wander into the middle of it and sort of tap a hand on his shoulder as he's down there and, and just say, I can't believe you survived that, honestly. <laughs> no can I, sir, you, no can I. You really should be dead. <laughs> Is that weeping? What? <laughs> the great bedside manner. I have a minus two wisdom. <laughs> I can tell. Um, that would be my intelligence. Um, <laughs> after a few, I'd probably say about another ten minutes goes by, and you can actually hear like ho ho horse hooves, uh, but better sounding than that. <laughs> and, now that's um, cool. That's ten cool. minutes. That's perfect. Ah. Uh, I'm going to go to the mage and one of the captains, and I'm taking a tooth from each of them. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, hobgoblins do have some pretty sharp... Uh, Say, so they have like a like a tusk, yeah. orcish sort of thing? Yeah, it's, I, wouldn't call it a, I wouldn't call it necessarily a tusk. It doesn't protrude like that, but mm -hmm. uh, they're more like... Like a, like a good canine. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, get so you, one you from you me. get in there with your dagger and just kind of... <laughs> tooth. <laughs> Put it in my tooth bag. Make a sweet necklace out of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you as you are doing that, you hear the the clopping of hooves, and um, uh, four riders enter the square from the south. Um, all four of them, actually, coated in uh, blood, similarly to some of you, some of you more so than others. Uh, mostly Gale and Jacob are mostly Gale. <laughs> yeah, I would say Jacob is like ninety percent blood at this point. Gale's probably like eighty percent blood at this point. <laughs> um, Gale's more arterial blood. A lot of <laughs> um, a lot of it burnt up. To be fair, yes, yeah, exactly. And a lot of a lot of your surrounding wind just buffeted it away. So you, you actually recognize these four figures who come riding in. It's actually the four senior officers of, uh, of Green Hollow. Where you have uh, Lieutenant, is he a Lieutenant? No, Captain Bagram Oda, uh, Lieutenant Micah Stonehand, uh, Marshal Voline, um, who is kind of like, she's the, she's the main boss lady. Uh, and um, Corporal Glimwit Starsbarrel. Um, and they all come 
riding um I will Valine is at the head um and uh Glimwit has a bandage wrapped around one arm and you can see there's like an arrow kind of protruding from uh from his shoulder um and they all kind of come to a stop and look around the clearing or look around the courtyard here and see there are no hobgoblins and seem kind of surprised like they expected the force their the forces here to be overwhelmed um and kind of take you all in they'll hop down off of their horses and the marshal approaches um probably i was i say she would go up to kirith because i think you're the one who's closest to to her Mm. she will say um i don't think she she probably wouldn't know your name but she would say um um, report what happened to you um there was an attack on this on this yes clearly and um I guess I was the first to respond because I was closest, and then uh, these people showed up, and uh, the guards did their job for the she most part. She looks over but... and sees the one guy is just like <laughs> weeping, and she kind of gives him like gives him the eye, and then like looks back at you, kind of um, softening her tone a little bit. Um, says, um, so we have you to thank for stopping these invaders and, uh, guys, and when she says you she kind of looks to all of you well mostly oh and i'll point to to the storm and and gale mostly them but yes we helped impressive I'm, i must say i'm i'm impressed that the four of you were able to take on this many Hobgoblins, they're very aggressive creatures. Um, they're puny. Bogram kind of, yeah, you say that, Bogram kind of hops down uh, from the so, from the, his horse, and he looks very uncomfortable doing so. Like, he does not he does not ride horses very often. Uh, he's a half-orc, um, kind of greenish-gray skin. Battle scars. He, he's like, he's the captain of the guard. A lot of people refer to him as dad behind his back, because they would never do it to his face. Um, but he he steps up, kind of grinning and surveying the courtyard, and he says, "He says, uh, ah, hobgoblins are only as tough until you smack them on the foot and boop them on the nose." Uh, he kind of <laughs> looks. He sees a kindred spirit in you, Snow, and gives you like a, a warrior's nod. Valine might be wise to. You were talking about a task force. I think you just found your, your men and ladies. And he kind of nods to you. I'm a cat. <laughs> mm, fair enough. Cats. He men looks and like ladies, a dragon. And dragons. This assortment of, of, of wonderful <laughs> people here. And Valine kind of. Um, Beautiful so menagerie. Glass at all of you. Um, you've all done very well. Tomorrow, I want you to get some rest for today. Tomorrow, you will be rewarded for your efforts here and promoted. We can use people of competence and skill. You need to figure out exactly how these. Hobgoblins slipped past our patrols and got so close to the gates without being spotted. Is is there a is there like a body on this on the hobgoblin? The, the mage one that... and one of the hobgoblins turned into ash. The two captains are still they're split in half, but there's still there are still bodies there. Mm, okay. Actually, um, I would say Glenn would. Uh, silently moves past uh, and starts searching the bodies. Um, and when he passes by you, De- Gail, he says, well done. Thank you. Yeah, and, and while he's doing that, Caius is also searching the bodies, but not like looking in their pockets. He's just sort of examining the wounds to see like how sturdy they are. Sure. Uh, medical. Uh, do a medicine check. 
Sure. So we've we've got some beheaded, some split in half. Yeah. <laughs> Does at least one of them have like a the uh, I guess the I guess the uh, mm. these guys here. I guess. Hold on. Let me, uh, these guys. Is there at least like a like a like a head on a on some shoulders with one of these guys? Um, yes, one of them. The one, this one, he has a head. It's he got split from Grundle to the the bottom half. Chest. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'll go. I'll talk. Say something to Marshall, and I and I'll ask her. Uh, would you like to ask some questions? She looks over at you, like kind of shocked. <laughs> you can do that. I'll give her an. Uh, I'll give her an answer. I can. How long does it? Do you? Uh, it doesn't matter how long they're dead. Well, I believe. Well, with my ability, I can. You can ask it five questions. Could this wait until tomorrow when we could be in a more secure locale? Uh, I believe it can. Very well. She's. Very pleased now. Like she, at first when she came up, she seemed kind of bitchy, and then she saw that you were all like badasses and was, you know, mildly impressed. And then you say that you could bring back one of these goblins to the hobgoblins to get more information. She's like very pleased. Um, uh, she says, "I will send some men to collect these bodies tomorrow oh, uh, around noon." Fine. If you could meet me at the Green Hollow, I will let you into my office and we will have a discussion with this corpse. Very well. Um, I'm trying to think. And she also, she also mentions that she'll, she's going to give you guys a bonus as well. Uh, a sort of uh, a protecting the castle fee <laughs> or <laughs> payment. Well then, um, I'm sorry. Basically, we take the uh, guards' pay, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there are certainly openings now. Something, something is cleared up in the budget. Um, uh, the lieutenant Micah, the Goliath, she hasn't said anything yet, but looks disapproving at that at that joke and. Uh, <laughs> Um, Valine kind of puts out a hand in a placating gesture. I'm sorry, I know of the excitement. I, I never asked your names. Um, I'll just say it. my name is Keyrith. Keyrith. She looks at you, Tracy. Uh, no, Tracy. She looks at you, Gail. <laughs> Gail puts the half bottle of brandy back into her bag. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say anything. She said brandy. <gasps> yeah, she got it from her cousin Carolyn. <laughs> she she nice. promised that she promised she would Solid. save to Dante at every victory. <gasps> oh. <laughs> and she says, "Gail." She her gaze falls onto you, Caius, as you're examining the wounds on this hobgoblin, and you you discover that. I, well, at, at this point, he may all, he may be looking at the wounds on the dead guards uh, mm. as well. Yes, because he's just sort of, he's like, hmm, yes. You Qu find question. which, oh, which uh, wounds were the ones that actually ended their lives, and you're like, oh, yes, that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense as to why that guy died. Mm -hmm. um, bad, bad, split in half, bad ingredients. Uh, I've got experiments. So, oh, um, yes, uh, Kai, Kai, Kai. Kai, yes. We're saying we're all saying our names out loud now, right? Yes. And last but not certainly not least. The, uh, um, <laughs> are you cleaning your fur? Do you do that? Yes. Or do you, do you actually, do you take a no, shower? No, he's, he's sat down. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does both. Uh, but he's like sat down on his butt, knees up, feet on the floor, uh, one hand in front of him. So it's almost like a cat sitting on three legs and like has tongue out licking his forearm, sort of like a cat licking its mm -hmm. paw. <laughs> And he's he's not paying any attention to anything that's going on. He has no idea people are talking right now. <laughs> um, the marshal will step up and kind of like sit on her haunches in front of you, kind of look to catch your eye. 
Oh, hi. Hello. May I have your name? Are you mad at me? Quite the opposite. I'm rather pleased with you, actually. Oh. Uh, I am many storm clouds, but most people just call me Storm. Storm. Very fitting name. I am the Marshal. Yes, you are important and in charge. <laughs> she fluffs up a little, like, like a little bit of plumage. Like she's like, yes, that is that is very true. Um, good. <clears throat> mm, midday tomorrow. Make sure you're in my office. I will have more, more things for you to explore and more bad things explore. To know. Yes. Really? But tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not now. Not now. Rest for now. Sure. Um. Okay. She stands, dusts off her pants, um, and she uh, kind of walks back towards her horse and says, This is not the only front that we were attacked on. Some. One of the mutated clans of orcs, the ones with the gills on the side of their necks, came out of the ocean. We did not assume that they could breathe in the salt water as well as fresh water, but they surprised us. I don't know what they were attempting. It seems rather foolish. We're very strong here. Perhaps we will learn more tomorrow. Oddly coordinated. I thought so too. Goblins and orcs? Hmm. Well, oh! Yeah. Anyway. He we will discuss this more tomorrow. Realizes he's been using out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dismissed. She turns, hops onto her horse, <clears throat> and then uh, Captain Bogram groans and then just like throws himself like a sack of grain onto the onto the saddle <laughs> and you hear the horse go <laughs> in like frustration that this person is riding them again uh, and then they all kind of click clop off through the through the streets back down towards the headquarters awesome that went well yeah I guess I guess did they take a body with them to um, take them? Yeah, she said that she was gonna have people come up and collect the bodies. Okay, I only need but one, so I guess you... it just needs to have a head. She's just taking yeah, the, just... the other the the one that the the head is completely annihilated, and the other hobgoblins, um, they're all uh -huh. just getting burned. But the one that's head is attacked. Like <laughs> God, you're gonna be this fucking one, right? interrogating a split in half corpse. Uh, um, they're taking that one and putting okay. it somewhere. Probably in one of the empty warehouses along the docks. Okay. Um, uh, Brother Tythor actually comes out and starts taking care of the, the wounded, and um, one of his acolytes comes with him, and they start like gathering the, the remains of the, of the guards and saying last rites over them and stuff. All right. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll help if I can. He, he gladly accepts the help. And, you, know, yeah. you, you both whisper, you have different, you know, he, he says a prayer for Palor, you say one for Bahamut to guide their spirits back into the void. Um, and uh, eventually the sun starts to set and you all wander back to your various abodes with um, potential promotion, bonuses, and exploration on the horizon. I think that's Sweet. what we're going to call it. Nice. Hey. I dig it. <clears throat> I hope everybody had fun. That was fun. That yeah. was awesome. I had a blast. Guys, yeah. I, I, when I picked the hobgoblins, you know, and did their, like, did the encounter balancing, I didn't really glance at their health. And I, like, started 
ty- typing it in as we were fighting, and I'm like, all oh, these fuckers have 11 health. <laughs> Oh. Um, so now I have a good idea of your capabilities. Jeez, um, capabilities, my good lord. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. hopefully, in counterbalancing will be a little. It'll be a little more challenging next time. It was right at the deadly threshold, so I was like, I'm just gonna put it right there, see how they deal with it, and then you guys stomped on them. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was that easy. No, okay, you're right. They got a couple of good hits on, in on you. I mean, it was mostly because because Storm took a lot of that, a lot of the. the... Yeah, Storm just took so much yeah. damage and just that's standing my job. There. Yeah. And between between like, Gale, here and... I am, come and get me, motherfucker. Yeah. Between Gale and Storm, <laughs> the the damage was pretty well separated. Um, yes. See, her plan of action is Hit get in, run. get out. Mm-hmm. Yes, it worked out pretty well. Sticker. Yeah, she took the one hit, but... Your, your, your sprinting, sliding upward stab is really dope. Yeah. Um, anyways, thanks so much Jack. for watching, everybody. Um, Thank you, Chris. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm really excited yeah. to continue onward and start incorporating other things that I've hinted at for some people, and others will see what happens. Uh, but I have <laughs> lots of fun plans. There's, as you can tell, there's shit going on in on this island, and uh, of the mysterious variety. Anyways. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna be posting this, uh, posting this up on YouTube. I'm probably gonna do a rerun tomorrow, sometime around noon or something. Um, but thanks for watching, for all of you who stick in chat. You guys rule. And yeah, thanks. Keep on rolling. <laughs> and... Wrong button. I hit the wrong button. <laughs>